So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to teach you uh, what I know about landing your dream job in three, five easy steps. But before we dive in, I have uh, questions for you. Have you heard about a secret formula for job search success? And have you looked for it? Just raise your hands if you ever heard of anything like that. Yeah? Okay. Be curious to know what are the, the tips. Any, anybody else? So it'd be great, right, to, to have a, a formula like this that will guarantee you that you spend the less time possible finding your dream job. So uh, after working with dozens of professionals, specifically multilinguals and expats, I came up with what I think works, right? And today this is what I want to share with you. And the first step is definitely clarity. It's the first step in many different areas, right? So before you embark in any job search process, you want to be crystal clear on a few different things. So first of all, your values. So your values, I mean what is really important to you. And I want to give you specific examples so that you can understand better. So if you are a person that cares about the environment and for you it's essential that you work in a company that reflects those values, you, you really want to, to do this work and sometimes you can take tests online to find that out. You can talk to your friends and family if you feel stuck because they will know. They will say, oh, I'm, I'm sure that you have uh, this as your core value because you're talking about this all the time. So you want to be clear on your strengths as well before you embark in any job search process because you will have to be 100% confident about them before selling yourself to anybody else. You want to be clear on your goals and aspirations. It doesn't have to be crystal clear at this stage, but you want to know, you know, you want to have an idea of where you would like to be in three to five years, what type of role, what type of industries, which country, which city, all of these questions. Your past experience as well. So you want to understand what led you to where you are now. So which studies uh, did you take and why? Because you will be asked during the interview process to justify your path to date. It doesn't need to make perfect sense, but it needs to be to make sense to you and that you, you, you own basically the choices you've made, the detours you took, um, and yeah, and the progress that you've made. Your priorities as well. And priorities and non-negotiables are, are very close. So what are you looking for? What is the number one criterion for your next role? Is it a minimum salary expectation, which is totally fine if this is your priority? You want to be clear and not negotiate uh, by looking for other opportunities that doesn't fit the minimum that you would like. For some people, it would be the flexibility. I want a remote work, a job. I want a hybrid type of model. If, you're, if for you it is important for your work-life balance, no need to spend time and energy looking for something else because we'll see then the few other steps, right? It's a, it's a process. The job search um, can be extenuating, can be, can be long, can be difficult, so first step is to be crystal clear on those few points. Second step, competency. Again, what do I mean by that? So not only, of course, you need to be clear on your strengths and your expertise, you need to have documents, online profiles that reflect all of that. So this starts with a compelling and achievement-focused resume. And by that, I mean a resume that showcases your skills and ideally that will give details about the impacts that you had. So any numbers or percentage you can think of. Let's say you were hired to be a customer support advisor and you did your, your job very well. Actually, you exceeded the targets. Uh, maybe you, you reach 92% of customer satisfaction over a certain period of time. You want to make sure to include this in your resume to, so that the person understands that you are not just a good customer support advisor, you are actually exceeding targets by this percentage. All of this is super, super important. Cover letter. Let's talk about the cover letter. <laughs> Who here likes to write cover letters? Enjoy doing that process. 
Okay, well, I know, yeah. We really don't want to add them. And usually we think that if it's not specifically requested, then we can get away without attaching them. My advice, you would probably not like to hear this, is if you really want the job, even if it's not specifically requested, you want to take the time, the extra time and energy to actually include a strong cover letter, which is not a copy-pasted version of your resume. I think there is a misunderstanding of what a cover letter needs to focus on. So it's not interesting to anybody to read your resume and then to have a cover letter that covers exactly the same thing. But in the cover letter, you want to target your specific skills and experience to the industry. So maybe you want to talk about the values that we were talking about in step number one, right? Why am I applying to your company? It's because my values reflect your company's mission or is in alignment with you know, your bigger purpose, etc. So you want to use a cover letter to showcase that you are the perfect fit for the role and uh, add additional information that you cannot find in the resume because of the limited space, obviously, that you have. Now, transferable skills. So transferable skills, everybody has them. Um, these are skills that from one job to another, independently of the industry, you would have used those skills or, it's usually soft skills, right? So if you're good with people, it doesn't really matter the job title, you would probably need that skill in any future job. To be a strong communicator, to work well with teams. Um, what else? To, to be a critical thinker, a big picture person or detail oriented. Doesn't really matter again what you did in the past, you want to highlight those skills for any future opportunities as it will probably be an asset. And competency also, I mean, any additional training and courses that you can take. It doesn't have to be you know, a full bachelor degree, but sometimes if you really want to change trajectory and enter a new uh, career path, you need to have something recent on your resume. So it could be a three month certification. It, could, it doesn't, like I said, some people are like, I really don't want to go back to the university. It doesn't always have to be, but I always encourage you to keep developing yourself and to look at short term courses. And sometimes, again, it depends on the industry. Sometimes it needs to be a new master's degree, and that's okay. But if you're clear on why you're doing it, then it's super important. Next step. And I, probably you already see the pattern, right? So it was clarity, step one. Competency, step two. And now we're talking about confidence, step number three. This is huge. And we usually forget that part, right? So we, we usually have the strategy, okay, so we know we need a resume. We know we need to prepare for our interview. But confidence, sometimes we're missing, uh, we're missing um, a bit on that one. So by confidence, what I'm talking about is you need to believe in yourself, basically. So whatever you want to do, I really don't know yet, obviously, individually what you want to do, you absolutely need to be convinced that you can get it, that you deserve it, and that you have either all the right skills to get it, or you will do whatever it takes for you to get the skills to get it. So you cannot embark in a job search process with the feeling already that you're wasting your time, that you will not get what you want. And a lot of the people I work with, they do the actions without the belief that they will bring results. Obviously, you know, the law of the universe, you don't get the results that you want if you don't fully believe it. So it's super, super important to ask yourself, um, and to, to, just to be clear about this, do I need to, to, to gain more confidence about my ability? And maybe sometimes it's a competence issue. You feel that you lack a certain skills, then you go back, right? You go back one step and you look at how can I maybe take an additional course, additional training, internship, whatever, to gain more confidence. Interview skills. Another thing that I've noticed is sometimes you can be super confident about your own skills, uh, but you lack to demonstrate this during the interview because of the nerves, right? So you know you're qualified, you know you'll be a perfect fit for the job, but unfortunately the nerves get in the way and you, demo you fail to demonstrate that to a person in front of you. 
like, for example, I'm super nervous right now. You can probably feel it, right? <laughs> but I, I trust 100% in what I have to say and share with you. So I'm overcoming whatever nerves or stress by just being, you know, self-belief again. Because I believe that what I have to share is probably valuable to one or many of you here. I try to overcome this. So confidence is absolutely key. And it's a skill. So the more you practice, the more you step outside your comfort zone, the more confident you'll be. Sometimes we wrongly think that, okay, some people are born confident or, and you know, I'm not. It's, it's really not how it works, right? It's really something that you can practice. Elevator pitch. Again, I want to ask you the question. Do you, do you have one? Do you, do you know how to introduce yourself in 30 seconds or less, if, like today, for example, if you met recruiters or did you, did you have a small pitch ready to, to explain briefly and succinctly sorry, how, uh, who you are, what you do, what you're looking for? If not, this can help. This can definitely help with the nerves. To have this, of course, you need to prepare it in advance, but to have this short presentation of yourself that you can say in connection message on LinkedIn, if you connect to somebody, you know, um, or in person today, if you meet someone and you want to introduce yourself without going, you know, without rambling, being super clear, elevator pitch can definitely help. Your body language as well, you might to be very mindful about that one, it's a tricky one. Usually you need to, you know, interview to practice your interview with somebody because the best person to be able to point those details would be the person actually in front of you because you might not be aware of things you do uh, repetitively without realizing it's very uh, subconscious. And in general, how you present yourself in the world. Um, every adjective you use to talk about yourself, whether on LinkedIn or on your resume, I, have excel I usually work with highly talented people, right? And very, very few of them will be confident to use, um, you know, so exceptional or great or strong. So all these kind of adjectives or specifiers of the experience will be a bit too humble, I'd say. When you're looking for a job, <laughs> humility is actually can get in your way. So it's great to be humble in life in general but absolutely not when you're looking for your dream opportunity. If you're great at something, you need to own it and be proud of it and mention it and have data to back this up, obviously. So let's move on to step four. Connections, super important. The person who tells you that you can get your dream job by yourself is lying to you. You really can't. You need to use your network to get access to those opportunities that you might never, not even be aware of. So your network includes past and current colleagues and supervisors and more. Your neighbor is already somebody in uh, your network. So my advice when you're looking for a job is to be very vocal about it, to let people know. It doesn't have to, if you're currently employed, obviously you might want to be discreet in your current company. But apart from that, if you're currently unemployed, Everybody who knows you should know. And the idea is that if they think, if they hear somebody who has an opportunity, you want them to think of you. So let's try not to be shy about looking for a job or embarrassed or whatever. And let's tell everybody, this is what I'm looking for. Think of me if you hear about this opportunity in your network. So on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is the best place to be right now in 2022. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile and you're actively looking for a job, you're probably missing opportunities for sure. So yeah, I have actually, I have a brochure here with a guide on how you can use LinkedIn in your job search. So what you can do today to not just be on LinkedIn, because again, another mistake that people do, they create a profile and they don't connect with anybody. So it's just, um, page of them and their past experience, like a resume online. But LinkedIn works when you actually connect with people and ask for introductions and ask for coffee chats and you know ask them questions about their roles, their industries, their companies. That's the best use to use LinkedIn, to ask for referrals at some point, 
not necessarily as the first uh, introduction, but later on, once the relationship is built, you want to use your network online as well to get those opportunities. And again, I want to congratulate you all for being here today because this is, it, it proves uh, me that you are actually actively working on that. So any networking event you can think of in your industries that are open, obviously, to, to you, you can find a lot of events online, you know, if you just type the right keywords in Dublin specifically. So seminars, career fairs, you want to be there. You want to have your elevator pitch ready, you want to have your resume ready, if possible. Uh, I'm actually one of the coaches at the career clinic. So if after this you would like to get specific advice on your resume, I'd be very, very happy to provide this for you. Whether you have it printed or online, I'm happy to have a look. But super important to be in those places where you improve and grow your network. And let's have a look at the last step. Consistency. So we cannot obviously pretend that we can do without, right? You absolutely can't. So consistency, especially, I always like to say, which might sound a bit mean, I'm not too excited to help anybody get any job. I mean, that's nice. Okay, that's good. Sometimes we need any job, right, to pay the bills. But what I'm really, really passionate about is to help somebody with crystal clear on what they're looking for to get their dream job. This is really the reason why I do what I do is for people to be happy at work and fulfilled and not just get any job and leave for the weekend, etc. And I know sometimes we need to do that. But if you are really targeting your dream job, you will definitely have to be consistent. It might take time, despite all the confidence in the world, the best resume in the world, you know, it might take time. So you will grow your skills in resilience. You need to be adaptable as well. A mistake that many, many people are doing is that they keep doing the same thing <laughs> again and again. They don't get the results that they want, but they keep doing it. I'd say try it enough, long, long enough to, to see if it works. And if you've tried, let's say, for three months, you know, the same strategy and it doesn't work, probably you need to fix something. So keep this mindset of, okay, I'm open for feedback, I'm open to change, maybe I need to tweak my resume, even though I think it's perfect as it is, maybe not. Or maybe the way I answer this interview question, maybe I can ask advice to somebody else. So always, always make sure that you, you know, you keep long enough before getting discouraged, but you also adapt when necessary. So as a recap, so yeah, it was the five C's. So I, I kept it very, very simple for all of you to always remember this. So clarity, competency, confidence, connections, and consistency, and probably more, but I believe that those five really encompass everything you need to master or work at. It's always a work in progress anyway, so it doesn't have to be 100% in all of those steps. But really, if you keep this framework in mind, I'm pretty sure you, you'll get the, the results that you want. And if you need help with any of those five steps, and maybe you can already think, okay, okay, now I know the steps, I probably need to work on my resume, so it would be the competency one. Or maybe the first one, I'm not 100% clear on what I want. And you might want to discuss with a coach to help you figure this out. So if you're interested in having a conversation, and I hope the, well, the QR code should work, but I offer 20 minute discovery calls. So after today, well today you can chat with me until 4 p.m. if you want to, but after today I'm very happy to offer all of you the possibility to have a 20 minute discovery call with me, it's totally free, or you can go to my website, topofthepile.eu, with more information. So thank you so much. I hope it was useful.